Pull hard once, and a whole section of railway track has been pulled up. After being sent directly into the car through the crane, continue to move forward. Pull out another section of track. A section of track is 25 meters long. This machine can recover 500 meters of track in an hour. The whole process does not need to unscrew a single screw. This is the miracle of the track renovation vehicle. The main job is to replace the track. It includes the car head, the car body, and the crane. After finding the track to be recovered, control the crane to lower it. Open the mechanical claw. After ensuring that the four mechanical claws have firmly grasped the track, lift the track in place. Then, send the track directly into the car. After all the old tracks have been recovered, open the track press, roll the entire line again. Then, you can install the new track. First, install a layer of fiber mesh. It can reduce the sinking phenomenon of the track. Then, open another track renovation vehicle. Operate in reverse order. Place the new track from the car. Install it section by section. In this way, a new railway line has been preliminarily installed. When the railway is opened and operated for a while, the new ballast will be compressed. Some uneven places will make the track unevenly concave. This requires a ballast filling vehicle. Add some ballast. Help the track restore stability. So, do you understand how to replace the track? This is probably the fastest wood splitter I've ever seen. A log is fed into one end, and in an instant, it becomes many small pieces of wood ejected from the other end. Whether it's a smooth trunk or a messy branch, it can be broken down into countless small sections. These small pieces of wood are best when used for brewing tea or burning fire. Notably, these pieces of wood are not split, but snap. Inside the machine, two steel plates are installed on the top and bottom. The shape of the steel plate is very special. Each has a raised part. During rotation, the raised parts on the top and bottom will come together, snapping the wood. Before coming together, it will clamp the wood and move it inside. The usage is very simple. Just place the wood at the machine's entrance. The steel plate will automatically move the wood inside, continue to transfer and continue to clamp. If you want to transport these pieces of wood, you don't have to struggle to carry them onto the vehicle. Just install a conveyor at the exit. During the process of breaking down the wood, it can directly transfer the wood into the vehicle's bin. If it's only used for the family, just place a bag at the exit. The broken down wood will automatically complete the bag Bagging, convenient for storage and use. In addition, some people, to save costs, have directly converted wheels into wood splitters, cut the wheels into a spiral shape, then grind one side firmly. During continuous rotation, feed the wood into the entrance. Thus, it can also easily complete the task of breaking down the wood. So, isn't it very interesting? The person in the video is not driving a train, but cleaning a chimney. This black soot is the remaining coal in the chimney. When burning coal, some of it will be introduced into the chimney through heat and stick to the surface. Over time, this will reduce the space inside the chimney, slowing down the air circulation, which will greatly affect the efficiency of the furnace. Therefore, a chimney cleaning device has been invented. Its main function is to clean the obstacles in the chimney. First, plug in a vacuum cleaner suitable for the chimney. After turning on the switch, the internal air pump will operate at high speed. First, it sucks all the air in the duct. Without air, it's the turn of the remaining coal on the chimney surface. Since the remaining coal is in powder form, it can be easily sucked out. Finally, the space inside the chimney will return to its original size. The stove in the house will also burn more vigorously than before. Some people in the house, because they have not cleaned for a long time, the remaining coal has stuck tightly on top. Therefore, after completing the above steps, a hard iron ring will be installed at one end of the stick then put into the chimney while continuously rotating the remaining coal will be cleaned this kind of stick is both hard and soft and can be connected to a new stick at the other end extending the length of the stick and finally cleaning the entire chimney how about it isn't this very interesting Foam can also be used to build houses. Using a spray tube similar to an ice cream dispenser, foam is placed around a circle, layer upon layer. In an instant, a wall made from foam is built. This is the technology of 3D printing with foam to build houses. It's noteworthy that two rows are built at the same time. There will be a certain gap in the middle. These gaps will eventually be filled with concrete. This has greatly accelerated the speed of house construction. Just 33 hours are needed to build a house of nearly 100 square meters. You need to know this is not the first time we have built this 3D printed house. The mechanical arm carrying the conduit moves along the designed path, placing concrete layer upon layer until a wall is built. The construction efficiency is faster than the previous method. However, the pure concrete wall has a disadvantage. That is, it's not full enough. Therefore, after the house is built, polyurethane foam will be sprayed on the wall. It can effectively keep the temperature inside the house. And this 3D printed foam house technology is a combination of two construction technologies. After the mechanical arm receives the model data, it will use a 
laser sensor to control the foam spraying. First, two foam towers are built. It serves as both the concrete mold and the insulation layer. After filling with concrete, the excess part is removed. A house that is both sturdy and insulated is built. Do you think this house is safe enough? This is a rescue image after the ski lift emergency break. Unfortunately, they would be stuck above. Eventually, they were rescued by a ladder. If a little more unlucky, it would be the Pudori Ski Resort in 2018. The cable car not only did not stop urgently, but also backed up. Without power, it will slide from top to bottom. The speed will only get faster and faster. After sliding back to the starting point, those who are still sitting on it are likely to be thrown out. More than 20 cable cars are stacked at the starting point. The crowd watched from behind. Those who are still sitting on the cable car cannot escape escape because only jumping down can minimize damage. Fortunately, no one lost their lives because of this. Here we need to understand the operating principle of this type of cable car. It has two sliding wheels, one at the starting point and one at the end. Together pull a twisted wire and the only power device is installed at the starting point because of the high altitude and low temperature. If there is a sudden power cut, in most cases workers will start the diesel engine immediately or activate the emergency brake. But the workers in this accident did nothing because the cable car going up the mountain was full of people. The cable car going down the mountain is empty. The weight difference between the two sides is too large. This caused the original uphill cable car to slide down. Of course, this situation will not often occur because the current cable cars are all equipped with automatic braking devices. This is a machine that is said to be able to lay the flattest concrete surface. If you want to know how flat it is, take a spirit level to measure it. The name of this machine is a laser leveling machine. After the workers pour the concrete into the designated position, the machine adjusts the hydraulic machine to expand forward. The laser device at the front will detect the height of the previously laid surface and lower to the same height according to this standard. Then, just use a scraper to scrape back, the concrete will become very flat. Interestingly, the scraper device not only has a scraper, but also has a row of small brushes inside and a fogging machine. In most cases, the brush will work with the scraper. And the reason why the laid surface is so flat is because the scraper does not just move horizontally. When zoomed in, you can see that during the movement, the scraper will vibrate up and down at a high speed, which will reduce the distance between the concrete parts to a minimum. The integrated brush in the machine is responsible for brushing away small defects so that no matter how the surface is scraped, after it hardens, it will still maintain that shape. Finally, if you want to speed up the hardening process of the concrete, use the fogging machine to spray the hardener evenly. This not only significantly improves work efficiency, but also reduces construction costs. Different from what you imagined, right? This is a packet of miraculous granules. Sprinkle it on a damaged road, heat it once with a flame gun, and it can quickly fill the holes, extending the road's usage life. The core goal is better patching and filling rather than renewing the road. Regular large-scale road repairs not only obstruct traffic, but also increase construction costs. These granules belong to thermoplastic materials. After finding a hole in the road, workers will first sweep the dirt out of it, allowing the granules to easily adhere inside. Then, just sweep the granules inside use a flame gun to heat it. The granules will heat up and melt, sticking tightly to the ground. Finally, sprinkle some sand granules and traffic can smoothly pass. The entire process only takes 10 minutes and the filled road can be used for an additional two years. If the area of the hole is too large, use a direct road patch. It is a type of concrete plant fiber fabric. Also involves cleaning the dirt inside first, tearing the back of the road patch. Use adhesive to stick the patch tightly to the hole position. It can also extend the usage life in a short time. If the area of the hole is too large, use a direct road patch. It is a type of concrete plant fiber fabric. Also involves cleaning the dirt inside first, tearing the back of the road patch. Use adhesive to stick the patch tightly to the hole position. It can also extend the usage life in a short time. Have you ever seen a jack specifically for airplanes? More than 10 airbags are stacked together, continuously inflated, continuously rising until it lifts the airplane. This is the airbag used as a jack specifically for airplanes. It may sound incredible. How could an airplane need a jack? When an accident occurs, the airplane loses power and is forced to land. After safely landing, people will have to think about how to bring it back. The tow truck is the best choice. However, at this time, the height of the airplane is too low. It is not yet possible to use a tow truck. The height of the airplane needs to be raised first. People have tried to use a crane to lift the airplane, but because the weight of the airplane is too large, after the crane arm breaks, the airplane will fall to the ground. The original airplane only needed repairs to continue flying. This time, there is really no chance of recovery. Therefore, this kind of airbag was invented. Place it under the wing of the broken airplane. Each vertically arranged airbag has an inflation hole. Insert the inflation pipe in turn and connect it to the air pump. Turn on the switch. The airbag is inflated layer by layer. After lifting the airplane to a certain 
certain height, the tow truck can smoothly drive under the airplane. In this way, the airplane can be towed away safely. It is worth mentioning that there is another type of airbag. It is specifically used for car rescue work. Place it on one side of the overturned vehicle. After completing the inflation, the crane will pull the vehicle towards it. It can play a very good buffering role, ensuring that the vehicle lands safely. How about it? Isn't this very magical? Setting up a large net on the half mountain demon tree. Let the wind blow the fog up. You can get a continuous flow of water. This is a special way of getting water in the Sahara Desert area, where the annual rainfall is almost zero. But there is often thick fog on the mountain. It's like water floating in the air. People need to figure out how to catch it. For this, people have invented this kind of large net and named it a capture net. Initially, it was just a net next to the ordinary nylon rope. When the fog passes through the nylon net, the mixed water will be filtered on top. The lower environment will make them. Then flow down along the net, drip into the water tank, finally flow into the water storage tank. Several large nets are placed there. No energy source is needed to provide power, can capture continuously for 24 hours. A week can capture 10,000 liters of water. Later, because the high-density nylon net will be blown by the strong wind, people then improved a new generation of capture nets. Although the grid gap has become larger, but the ability to collect water has increased. It is worth mentioning that this design that benefits the people, the invention inspiration actually comes from a kind of beetle. Its back has many protruding balls. Water in the fog hits the ball, will gradually gather into droplets, finally flow down the back into the beetle's mouth. How about, isn't this very magical?